Hello, I'm Steve with Rocky Mountain Equipment. I'm here today to talk to you about the Guardian sprayer and the recommended maintenance intervals. So we're going to start with basically the, the front of the sprayer and the boom assembly. One of the most important things to do with these booms is of course to make sure they're greased properly. Now I'm going to grab the grease. New Holland sprayers recommend a lithium based Molly grease. This grease is a very uh, thick flowable grease. Um, it stays on pins and bushings very well and is what actually the New Holland recommends for these sprayers. Um, the big thing is, is don't mix greases. If you're going to be having a grease gun for your sprayer, just use that grease gun for your sprayer. Don't mix this grease with the one you'd be using for your combine. It's a different grease and it doesn't quite uh, protect the bushings and pins as well. Of course, we have our big pivot pin assembly right here. You want to make sure this is well greased. And I know it makes a little bit of a mess down here at the bottom, but this is actually what you want to see. You want to know that this is very well lubricated. The other one that usually gets forgotten is there's a grease zerk right here. And this is the main pivot for the whole boom. And if that is not well greased, this pin will actually seize and it will cause some actual issues with your boom height control if it is not done very well. I'm gonna move down the boom here a little bit. There's really not a lot of grease zerks on the boom assembly itself. Here we have the secondary pivot, another big grease circle or large pin. And again, you should see a mess of grease around this pin. Walking back to the front of the boom. Here we have our breakaway assembly when it's folded up and there's a grease circle back in here. This is also very important to make sure it is greased. If this is not well greased, what will happen over time is this bushing will become loose and this, um, the, the boom won't be aligned properly anymore. So it's really important that is greased well. And there are adjustable bolts here uh, with shims just to make sure if it does uh, come out of a line, you can adjust it back. And of course, a great big spring. We're gonna go on to the other end and just give it a test. You just want to get a look down the boom here. I'll just get you to move to the boom. So if you look down the boom, you can see that this breakaway and all the nozzles are in line and that's the way they should be. When this breakaway does actuate, it goes up and back and then comes back down and is lined up again. If it does not return to this position, uh, check the spring adjusters, and of course the greasing. Make sure, that, like I said, this is very well lubricated. The other thing we have for greasing, of course, is the touchdown wheel here. There's small grease circ here to make sure that it pivots for if it does touch down the ground when you're going around corners. And there's also a small grease circ for lubricating the bearings of the wheel. On the Guardian 120 foot boom sprayers, the mono boom sprayers, we have these large struts. And they are there to uh, help prevent uh, torsion in the boom, uh, keep it a little bit more rigid. And um, what we wanna make sure, of course, is that none of this hardware is loose. We'll make sure it is good and tight. And the adjusting of it is in the operator's manual if it is required. In the boom support area here, whether we have a rigid mount or the uh, quick release mount, we will have these big pivots that require greasing as well. Uh, there's two down here at the bottom, um, the arms and there's two up here at the top. It's really important these are well lubricated because as this machine is going down the field, the suspension is allowing these arms to take up some of the shock and they are always constantly moving. So proper lubrication is important. Of course, with the Guardian sprayers, we have these large arms, suspension arms, and these pivot bushings up here for our steering. Very important that they are well lubricated uh, some of the older machines, there are four or five points here and a grease bank. On some of the newer ones, there's actually only one point to grease. Uh, but again, this is a high load, high wear area, so please make sure this is properly lubricated. Moving down to where the suspensions actually pivot, of course, there's grease search there from up underneath. And again, you should see grease actually um, 
pouring out of these joints when you're lubricating them. You want to make sure they are properly lubricated. Suspension cylinders on some of the newer sprayers also have grease cirques. And of course, the slides of the New Holland sprayer. Uh, on both sides, of course, these frames move out from the center body and we want to make sure these are properly lubricated. There's a grease cirque down at the bottom and another remote grease cirque here for lubricating the top. Talking about the, uh, the new final drives on these sprayers. Um, great improvement over the uh, older models has been our new variable displacement drive motors and planetaries. Uh, of course, these planetaries, the oil has got to be changed at least once a year. Um, it's really important though, in the first 50 hours of operation, that this oil is changed. Um, this is actually one of the, the perfect position to actually take out the check plug. We take it out in this position and then we have an, an operator slowly drive the machine forward until this is level and we should see oil there. What we don't want to do is to take out this plug anywhere near level or below because the pressurization of this uh, planetary will blow the oil out. Um, of course, with the ground drive of the sprayer, uh, we have the pl new planetary systems, variable displacement, and on these newer, uh, smaller models, we have only one hydro pump. Uh, we only need one hydro pump because every motor has individual traction control, uh, RPM sensors. So what we use is the, the variable speed of them to control the traction and which way the oil is flowing. But with this one hydro pump, we of course have one hydro charge filter. And in my opinion, it is best to change that filter every year and especially after the first 50 or 100 hours of operation. Staying on the bottom of the sprayer, we have the fuel water separator and filter. And directly up above it, there is another uh, finer fuel filter on the engine. One of the nice things about the 310 sprayer is that we can actually adjust the suspension to give us more accessibility to these filters when we're servicing. Here's the oil drain for the engine on these sprayers. Uh, it is very important that the, after the first 100 hours that the oil and filter is changed. And again, the oil and filter should be changed before you park it for the year. Um, we do that because when you run the sprayers uh, during the year, the oil captures soot and acids. And we don't want those sitting on the bearings over the winter. So it's the best to put nice clean oil in the engine before you park it for the winter. Of course, here are the boost lugs just in case you have to boost the engine on these sprayers. Uh, what they do have is three batteries on these sprayers. Two are used for starting and one is used for the electrical system. It's kind of a dedicated battery. If the two starting batteries become low, the uh, electrical system battery will actually be joined to them to help boost the amperage for starting the engine. We're up here at the engine compartment of the newer sprayers. Here we have a large cooling package for keeping our hydraulics and engine cool. And here we also have access to our hydraulic tank. In our hydraulic tank, we have two filters. One is a return filter for all the hydraulic systems. And the other one is a case drain return filter. It's very important to make sure these filters are properly maintained. Um, I actually recommend after the first 50 or 100 hours to change them. Uh, and then also every year. Uh, Filters are cheap compared to a hydraulic system. On the top of the reservoir, you can see the two uh, aluminum caps for the filters. Uh, again, it is important that you actually loosen off the vent uh, before you take off those caps. Uh, because it is a semi-pressurized tank, um, it will actually force oil out if you take off those caps without first venting the pressure. When you do take those filters out, please make sure that area is clean as possible. We do not want any oil, or sorry, any dirt getting into our oil when we are changing our filters. And of course, as part of the daily checks, please make sure that the oil is at the proper level in the hydraulic reservoir. Here on top of the engine, we have the uh, overflow tank or the coolant recovery tank for the coolant system. Um, you'll notice that it is a vibrant yellow coolant in here. 
That is, of course, the new Actifol OT. Very important, you put in the proper uh, antifreeze or coolant with these engines. Do not mix types. You, if you mix types, you will have to drain the whole system and start over again. The engine oil dipstick is here on the side of the engine compartment. Always best to check it with the engine before it is started during the day. And what you will notice with uh, CNH engines with our tier four emissions is that the engine oil will stay very, very clean. Even after four to 600 hours, it stays very clean. So don't use the color of the oil as a indication of how old it is. It is important when you do change the engine oil to write on the filter or in the maintenance records the date that you change the oil. To fill the engine, here's our engine oil fill right here. Nice big tube down to the engine. The air filters on these are the new power core style. The air flows through uh, very small honeycombs. The air flows through these small channels and all the dirt is captured in here. Um, these filters are not very easy to blow out. We don't rec actually don't recommend blowing them out very much. Uh, with the aspiration system on this sprayer, these filters should last a year, no problem. And maybe just change the primary filter every year and the primary and secondary filter after two years. Put the filter back down. It's really important to make sure that you put the top on properly because the top actually positions the filter to make sure it is sealed properly. With our tier four emission systems, we have our DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, selective catalytic reduction uh, emission systems. Um, they are relatively low maintenance, uh, just to make sure that the filters on the uh, DEF pump are properly serviced uh, and just check this area for leaks um, just make sure that we have no crystallization forming here um, if there usually is any issues with your exhaust system you will get faults or warnings on the display before anything severe happens with the newer style cabs our air filter is here at the back of the cab under this little panel again this is a charcoal activated filter and it's important to change it after every year. If you do get a new filter during the winter, make sure you do not install it until you're ready to go spraying. On some of the Guardian sprayers, there is a harness that ends right around this area, right in between the tank and the engine. And on the end is a terminator like this one here. And unfortunately, it is right in an area where moisture can get down and actually fall onto the terminator and get into the harness and the connections. Um, if you ever have uh, your CAN bus or ISO bus go offline or any issues with the control system just acting weird, um, find this terminator. It'll be tied up into the harness right around this area and take it off and make sure there's no water in it. When winterizing the sprayer, uh, these type of ball valves have a, of course, a ball that will actually capture water or even antifreeze in them for the winter. The best thing to do is to have an assistant up in the cab, turn the valves on, and then you unplug them. Okay, and then when they are powered off, you plug them back in just sporadically here, just to get the valve to be at the 45 degree mark. When it is at the 45 degree mark, it cannot capture any water and therefore the ball valve will not split. It is not the easiest thing to do, but it definitely helps with a lot of the uh, springtime issues of ball valves leaking. Of course, with winterizing the sprayer, uh, most people will put antifreeze in the tank and run it through the booms. It is very important, especially up here in Canada, that we actually drain the system after. Um, Antifreeze will not freeze until it gets down to minus 40, but of course we've had weather colder than minus 40. So after we winterize our sprayers, we always open up the valves or take out the plugs or take off the filters. And also make sure that you 
open up all your boom end valves as well. Another good thing to do for winterizing is to take off your nozzles. Uh, that ensures that there's no water captured in the nozzle body assemblies, depending on which ones you have. And also it gives you a... <laughs> Another part of winterizing is actually removing your nozzles off the nozzle bodies. Um, this will make sure any captured water is released and also will give you a chance to inspect your nozzles and make sure they're ready to go for next season. These were just some important tips for maintaining your Guardian sprayer, but please consult your operator's manual for all the scheduled maintenance requirements. Um, thank you very much for watching.